Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we shall take a look at Durbin-Levinson algorithm. Uh, so this algorithm is designed to help us estimate the coefficients in the uh, prediction or forecasting of uh, a time series. So just a quick recap, right? So we have been looking at forecasting problems and we want to predict uh, series at time n plus one given all of this data right so this is this, this specifically is one step ahead forecasting and a linear predictor right of x n plus one we've been denoting it this way so this means we are predicting n plus one based on n values x1 through xn right so this is given in this particular fashion uh, so remember uh, if, so if you recall, we are using these notations. So we are denoting the linear predictors with these coefficients that have these double subscripts. So this n, the first subscript, uh, denotes how many uh, terms are there in the model, right? So there are n terms here. So this prediction is based from n x1 to xn. So this first subscript denotes that. And the second subscript denotes the uh, what variable is the coefficient for? So phi n1 is basically a coefficient for xn, which is one step back, phi n2 when we go two step back, and so on, okay? Uh, so these co so phi n1, phi n2, phi nn, these coefficients are more meaningful than just using, say, beta1, beta2, and so on, okay? So we obtained this equation last time and then to obtain these coefficients that is the phi's from this equation we basically invert this gamma matrix. So the whole problem with this inversion is that if we have a large number of observations that is if n is large then inverting this matrix can be a problem right. So so therefore, um, we are going to look at some iterative solutions that bypass this problem of matrix inversion. So we look at some algorithm that will not require inversion of this matrix. And one such algorithm is the Durbin-Levinson. So what is the Durbin-Levinson uh, algorithm? So this is um it's also under property 3.4 in the textbook so it says that this these two equations remember this is what we're solving to get the linear predictors right so these can be solved iteratively as follows so we first have phi 0 0 is 0 and this p is basically the prediction error um so p 0 1 is this so phi n n can be calculated using this formula, okay? So um, phi n n, remember this is the last coefficient, right? Uh, in our linear predictor model, right? So we have coefficients going from phi n one, phi n two, and so on to phi n n, right? So that's this phi n n. So this phi n n has this particular formula, and you can see that it is based on, so it has this phi n one minus k. So it has these other terms in it. This is the prediction error. Oops. So, and then if for, so for n is equal to n greater than equal to one, phi n n is this, and n greater than equal to two. So these kind of coefficients, right, we get from this equation. So uh, it's a bit difficult to understand what is going on. There are lots of notations uh, here. Uh, but the important um, point is that uh, we need to obtain phi n1, phi n2, phi n3, and so on up to phi nn, right? These are the numbers we need to get. And we can use these two bunch of formulas to get those numbers. Um, so let's just uh, look at an example to see what is going on, okay? So here is an example. So we first write uh, 
uh, the terms in the Durbin Levinson algorithm. So for n greater than 1, phi n n has this form. So let's start with n is equal to 1. So we always start from n uh, from the lowest value, that's n is equal to 1. So phi 1, 1. So if you substitute n is equal to 1 here, you get row 1. Um, so k goes from 1 to n minus 1. So that's uh, and then you so the term here would be basically uh, so all of these would be zeros so you're initializing so if you so you're initializing phi zero zero and all the other values to zeros right so all of these will be zero here so you're left with row one um, so then so n is equal to one right so p two n here you get this so which is basically p 1 0 1 minus phi 1 1 right so you substitute n is equal to 1 and this is what you get but remember uh, p 1 0 is initialized to uh, gamma 0 and so this is the formula that you end up with so then we increase n to 2 uh, so or n for n greater than or equal to 2 this is the formula this is just taken from the Durbin Levinson algorithm so now we increment n to 2. So remember here, uh, k goes from 1 to n minus 1. So if n is 2, k goes k is basically 1. So this is the combination we have here. n is 2, k is 1. Phi 2, 2 is basically row 2. k goes from 1 to n minus 1. That is, uh, k takes value 1. n minus 1 is also 1. So we end up with phi 1, 1 row 1 and some same similarly you get this term in the denominator so you just have to be a little bit careful and substitute values carefully so we get phi 2 2 then we need to get remember phi n k right and k goes is, is 1 so we need to calculate phi 2 1 now so phi 2 1 is uh, phi 1 1 right n minus 1 minus phi 2 2 times phi 1 1 again so you get so we first calculated phi 1 1 and this uh, uh, prediction error then we incremented n to 2 and we find out that k can take values only 1 so then we calculate phi 2 2 phi 2 1 then we calculate this error so remember p uh, 3 2 which has this formula and um, you can continue in this way, right? So if n is equal to 3 now, k can take values 1 and 2. So we first calculate 5, 3, 3. Then we calculate 5, 3, 2 and 5, 3, 1. So this is the pattern, right? So five, then next we would calculate 5, 4, 4, uh, 5, 4, 3, 5, 4, 2, 5, uh, 4, up to 5, 4, 1 right so these are the terms and this is the prediction error uh, so and you can continue in this way till you calculate till you uh, calculate up to phi n n right uh, so a lot of calculations go along the way but uh, at many times if n is really large this is still better than inverting the large matrix so the standard error of the one step forecast is basically given in this way right so this is what we're trying to, so this is a final prediction error p n plus 1 n because we are trying to predict n plus 1 observation based on the past n observations right so the final number that we get here is the standard error or the prediction error uh, and basically so this is a product sign so this means you're multiplying 1 minus 5 1 1 square times 1 minus phi 2 to square times 1 minus 5 uh, so on up to 1 minus phi n n square and you can uh, uh, you can also observe it here or here so basically we are multiplying all of these terms here this is the product sign uh, so we can see now that Durbin Levinson algorithm basically helps us um, calculate all of these coefficients and the errors.
Now, it not only does that, but if you remember this term phi n n, uh, which was the last coefficient in our uh, prediction, um, it was the so the notation is the same as that we use for PACF. So this phi n n right is also our PACF. In fact, many textbooks define this PACF as this last coefficient from this uh, regression uh, prediction problem. So this property 3.5 says that the PACF, which is a partial autocorrelation function, can be, operate, can be obtained iteratively using this. So remember phi n n is now not only the PACF, so phi n n denotes both the PACF and the last coefficient in this linear uh, regression, uh, in this linear prediction. And um, so phi n n can be calculated again with this formula. So uh, next we'll take a look at uh, forecasting uh, ARMA processes in general. So a little bit uh, uh, deeper look into this forecasting problem. We now know that we can use the Durbin-Levinson algorithm. Uh, we'll have a, there'll be at least one exercise in the homework where you will, uh, we, we won't be proving it ex completely, but at least you'll be dealing with a partial proof of the Durbin-Levinson Durbin algorithm. Like why does it work? Um, so there's also another algorithm called innovations algorithm, which we will not be going, uh, which we'll, we, we'll be skipping that. Um, so... After the innovations algorithm, there is uh, a section on forecasting ARMA processes, and that is what I'll be covering. Uh, so the se I'm, I'm talking in terms of the textbook. So the sec uh, in, in the textbook, you'll find uh, there's a section on forecasting for ARMA processes, and that's what we'll cover in the next video. See ya.